passionate fans, packed out stadiums, and a genuine love of football. All the ingredients we've come to expect from the African continent. But this isn't Senegal, Cameroon, or even Nigeria. Far from it. This is East Africa's footballing backwater, Tanzania. They recently hosted the Sakafa Cup, finishing runners-up. But regional tournaments aside, Tanzania have a woeful record on the international stage. They last qualified for the African Cup of Nations in 1980. Back then, the country had real potential. And Temi Ramadan, a player on that side, explains just why it was never realised. There were a lot of difficulties in Tanzania at that time. The government ignored the importance of football and the potential we had. Nowadays, they've seen the light and have started to contribute. But in truth, football needs a lot of money to develop properly. The clubs don't have enough resources, and the country itself does not have enough money for that to happen. The average annual income in Tanzania is just $710, so it's not surprising that Tanzania's sporting infrastructure has been largely ignored. However, one source of inspiration is Simba Football Club. Over the last decade, the Dar es Salaam side have held their own against Africa's finest, twice making it to the CAF Champions League quarterfinals and even to the prestigious CAF Cup final back in 93. The club now wants to try and export some of its rising stars to Europe something which could undoubtedly help both club and country. The Simba chairman feels the biggest barrier is not the skill level of the 14 or so internationals on his books, but something much more basic. Right now, the main problem with the players is education. There are a lot of, poly, lot, lot of talent where players know how to play the soccer, but the big problem, they don't know the language, they don't have the, the education, so they can't play professional uh, out of the country, you see, because they don't have confidence of going out because uh, they are not educated. In a bid to raise money needed for a football academy with full educational facilities, Simba is hoping to redevelop the site of their former clubhouse in the city's financial district. They'll then rent out the office space to generate the necessary funds, all part of a larger plan for Tanzania's number one team. We are going to turn to a professional club and uh, uh, people will own the shares in the club and we'll have some 400000 or $500,000 uh, shares which will be for the investors where they can come in and uh, in terms of buying shares, uh, in, uh, inputting the management and uh, bringing the support of the coaches and everything whereby we can uh, develop the potential which is there uh, in the Simba fans. If private enterprise has begun to infiltrate the country's top club side, it's been non-existent at national level. In the past, political differences between the government and the Football Association of Tanzania have deterred companies from sponsoring the Kilimanjaro Stars. The FA has been left to fend for itself. Chairman Michael Wambura. The football in our country is not well commercialized. That's another problem which we have. Uh, so all the football association is the one who's sponsoring all the all the teams, uh, under 17, under 12, under 14, and you see that it becomes a very, very big burden. And sometimes we have to prioritize our expenditures to see uh, what team we should we should we should put the money for, you know. Then that is actually which it is a problem. The government itself is not pumping money into the football. With no public money to speak of, there has been one private investor who's been giving the FA a helping hand with its youth development. Good effort, encounter. Ronnie Minchins has for the last two and a half years been funding and running the only football academy in Tanzania. The Dutch Federation trained coach was sick of the government's apathy towards the younger sporting generation. Nobody here was taking responsibility for the youngsters. No one has found the time or the money to organise the young talent we have here and to teach them modern football. I have played here in the first division for the top team and also coached them for two years. So with my experience here, I came to the conclusion that something drastic needed to be done. The 37-year-old, who also coaches the national under-17 side, has already seen progress. That age group have reached the second round of the African Youth Championship for the first time ever. But the Belgian, who eventually hopes his academy will link up with a European club, feels more outside help is crucial. 
What's needed here is knowledge. What we need are coaches from Europe and America to come over here and transfer their knowledge to the local coaches. They would immediately see results because the children here are keen to learn. It would be very rewarding. In addition to football, Minchins is also educating his 100 or so students about the dangers of the HIV virus. One in three Tanzanians is currently infected with the disease. Important lessons are being learnt on and off the field. I've been here six months and I've been taught so many things. Firstly, discipline. Secondly, specific training techniques which we've never experienced. Finally, and most importantly, knowledge, education and information. Information. Like many of its East African neighbours, Tanzania has no officially registered football agents and few scouts from Europe ever visit this part of the world. The only way to generate good publicity for now, it seems, is on the pitch. The day when East Africa is going to have a good team in Cup of Nations, I'm pretty sure people will realise that there are a lot of potential in East Africa and they can invest in East Africa. At the moment, that's not likely. On current form, next year's Cup of Nations looks out of reach, but with proper government support, the country may not have to wait too much longer to play alongside Africa's finest once again. <laughs>